this week uh, we will be primarily focusing on measurements and instrumentation and as you would have seen in condition based uh, maintenance or monitoring one of the primary elements of monitoring is actually measuring the signals out of this machine so measurement plays a very important role in making any meaningful decision about the condition of the machine so if i if you all recollect our uh, conventional diagram which we always make so this is my machine which i am going to monitor and i have to put an external transducer to get some signal okay now it is this analysis of the signal which in the time domain on an oscilloscope would look something like this okay so is this correct or not is our study going to be whether we have measured it correctly so physical quantity needs to be measured just to recollect what are the physical quantities particularly in cbm one is could be the vibration of the machinery could be noise could be temperature could be the electrical current or voltage could be the flow rate etc so there are these are the mechanical physical quantities which needs to be measured so as you will recollect there are transducers which can use which can be used to measure these physical quantities so in this week we are going to see what are these different types of transducers what is the sensing element and what kind of output does this sensing element give now when we do condition based monitoring or condition based maintenance there are certain areas in which these measurements are done one is i could just go to the machine and record the data okay one is i could online monitor data from a remote location one is i could when i when this recording the data it comes i can even divide it in two parts i can do it frequently or only when needed or i can measure in situ so if you look at to these three aspects of measurement i could go to a machine and do an in situ measurements i could do it at an frequency every day every 6 months every 2 months and so on other is i could be recording the data at a fixed interval or i could record the data only when i need to be another location is uh, method is you know i could be remotely monitoring the data which is being continuously generated out of this machine 
So, if you will see the transducers in many of the cases, in one case the transducers are mounted permanently. or the other one the roving transducer, roving transducer. They are not fixed. We will only go to the machine only when uh, at a particular point measure it and move it go ahead to the next position. Now, question is in a system say for example, in a large steel plant, if we have permanently mounted transducers for doing online monitoring whether we are doing it correctly is a factor to be known. And when we have a transducer correct measurement, how do we ensure that? Okay. And if I look at these elements of instrumentation. In any transducer, I have a sensing element. Traditionally, sensing element had been strain gauges, but nowadays these people have moved into piezoelectric for some of these dynamic transducers, because some of the sensing elements are passive, some of them are active, some needs to be given an external power supply and so on. And then when the data which has been measured sometimes by this transducer requires some sort of a conditioning. For example, the data with time may be varying like this. Okay. So, we can linearize this by such a red line. <coughs> or sometimes there is a lot of noise in the signal. You can see this that there is distinctly a signal so this is my actual signal. Which is corrupted with noise also some signal this is a signal this is with time okay. so this kind of things may happen while i am doing a measurement sometimes the signal strength is so low that i need to amplify it So, these are if I have a transducer it gives an analog signal so I need to have a signal conditioner. and then we need to get an output. Now, sometimes earlier we had seen that this analog signal I mean I could sometimes after the signal conditioning it could be analog signal conditioning, it could be digital signal conditioning. So, if it is digital I will have an A to D then I will have a DSP processor and which will give data to a computer. So, in this signal conditioner many of them can be done this signal conditioner sometimes provides power to the sensing element. sometimes it amplifies the signal, 
sometimes it can done some sort of a filtering to remove noise or I could linearize the response and so on. Okay. So, some of these quantities can also be done by an A to D and a suitable DSP processor before we display it and this could be an data display unit either analog or digital. Now, if you look into this there is a, there is a there is also a cable which is also a device which is transmitting signal from one end to another end okay i have a transducer so there are certain lot of properties associated with the transducer itself which we will discuss so in an instrumentation setup this is the very generic nature of how the setup is so you know traditionally we have been people have been doing the analog processing. So, we have you know dials etcetera which will display an RMS voltmeter etcetera which will display the output out of an analog transducer. But nowadays with advanced instrumentation we can have an A to D converter and right after the A to D converter we can have a DSP processor where all these signal conditioning can be done and the output is displayed on a computer. It could be stored on a computer, it could be accessed remotely. So, the present day scenario and in instrumentation is this is the route people take. Okay. Transducer, A to D, DSP processor, computer with maybe remote access. But then we are going to focus mostly on this transducer part, but to give you an overall picture, we need to know that this is what actually happens in an instrumentation system. So, if you look at the transducer elements, okay, the analog transducers are the electromechanical type, wherein we have a resistance change to give it a certain output like the potentiometers, we have a change in the inductance or change in the magnetic field to get an output. We have a capacitor where you know there is a change in the capacitance to get an output. We have a strain gauge type of sensing element wherein the for a change in the strain because of a mechanical load or displacement, we can get an electrical output. So, these are the traditional electromechanical type uh, analog transducers. So, one is the potentiometer So, all the knobs you know which you see in some of the analog instrument it is basically changing the resistance. So, it will give a corresponding output inductance like an electromagnet if you move the electromagnet close to a surface you know iron surface if you move this there will be an electric voltage generated and then capacitance if there is a change in the one is fixed with the polarized voltage and if there is a motion there is a change in the capacitance. So, there is a charge which is produced which could be sensed like in the micro microphones etcetera. Of course, the electrical resistance strain gauge you know the resistance R is equal to rho L by A. Okay. So, the resistivity 
of the material of the wire, A is the cross sectional area, L is the length of the wire. If there is a change in the length, there will be a change in the resistance which can be measured by a Wheatstone bridge circuit. So, if I have a strain gauges are made. Okay. So, some delta L by L will produce a change in the resistance and so on depending on these parameters if you do a take a log and a derivative of that you can find out that the strain gauges are sensed by their gauge factor. Okay. And you will require to change measure the change in the small resistance you require what is known as a Wheatstone bridge circuit. or a potentiometric circuit. But the problem with this is they require an external power supply. Okay. But so, any place when there is a mechanical force displacement okay, pressure, the, the strain gauges could be used as a sensing element. Okay. But in the recent times, the piezoelectric material are being used as a sensing element. In piezoelectric material what happened? It is a material okay, which has a very sensitive axis. So, if it is pressed by a force across the it will develop a charge. Okay. So, this charge could be converted to voltage by what is known as a charge to voltage amplifier and you will get a voltage corresponding to this mechanical force. So, this piezoelectric material can be used to measure force, can be used to measure you know uh, base motion or acceleration. So, in other words, vibration is measured, measured through such piezoelectric accelerometers uh, and even force transducers have such piezoelectric material as sensing element. By the way, this piezoelectric material also have a property that if I give an electrical voltage they will also have a mechanical motion. So, and these materials are also used in control as an actuator in uh, small devices etcetera. But then there are also certain digital transducers like the they will generate a frequency or they will generate the digital encoder or digital pulses. For example, if I have an disk with lot of radial slots and so on, which is made to rotate and if I put a light source and a receiver of photo detector other end. So, with the rotation of this disk, if I look at the time, I will get certain pulses. And so on. And these pulses could be you know, 
if there are 1000 slots, they will correspond to 1000 pulses per revolution of the disk. And because these are optical, they are very lightweight. So, such disks are known as the digital optical encoders. Okay. Now, many a times you know if the speed changes, this pulse width is going to change. Okay. And this is 0 to some voltage, maybe voltage, because uh, because it is a light source and a photo detector has a very quick response. So, the detection will be either no or yes, no or yes. So, it is a logic circuit. So, such a digital trains can be generated out of these transducers and they can be used for you know sensing the speed of a rotating shaft which is attached uh, to I am aware this optical disk is attached to and so on. So, if you look at the measurement chain in any electromechanical transducer, I have an input which is my physical variable. This physical variable could be voltage, could be current, could be vibration, could be strain etcetera. And then I have a primary sensor okay. and this primary sensor could be the sensing element, be the strain, be the piezoelectric crystal and predominantly in our CBM we are talking going to talk about transducers where piezoelectric material is the most important sensing element and then we will get a corresponding output from this transducer. Now, if I was to come to the performance of any measuring instrument or transducer, I get some output. So, we will see for this transistor there are certain terms static characteristics like accuracy and precision, resolution, sensitivity, range, hysteresis and impedance. Because the first question anybody asks is the measurement correct. How does one ensure that? Okay. One is this accuracy, and when we discuss about errors, I will discuss more about accuracy and precision. But right now, I will talk about sensitivity. For example, I am measuring a mechanical quantity, say velocity, I am getting some voltage output in millivolt. Sensitivity could be some voltage output for a known mechanical unit. For example, the sensitivity of the transistor was 10 millivolt per millimeter per second. That means, 1 millimeter per second of mechanical velocity will produce an output of 10 millivolt. So, this sensitivity is a quantity which is given by the manufacturer. Because as you know, when you talk about data acquisition devices, all we do is get in some voltage signal and then we try to acquire the voltage signal. But so, in terms of the physical unit, this sensitivity is very, very important. At the same time, you will see 
that what is the least physical quantity a transducer can measure that is known as the resolution. Obviously, if I have a, you know, a ruler which you use in our classroom a 30 centimeter ruler. If you will recall there the least resolution is about 1 millimeter. Question is with such a resolution can I measure 0 0.001 millimeter? No, you cannot because the least it can sense is 1 mm. So, there is a curl turl called uncertainty. Uh, uncertainty of your measurement is nothing but the least count divided by 2. So, I need to find out what is my least count to measure the minimum value of a physical quantity which I am measuring. Okay. So, and this range is nothing but the either the maximum value minus the minimum value or sometimes in the logarithmic scale it is the max by minimum value in a log scale. Okay. So, we will talk about these in the subsequent classes regarding the hysteresis, impedance, accuracy, pressure and the dynamic characteristics which is very important to transducers which are using which we are going to use in uh, condition based uh, monitoring. Okay. Of course, at the same time we must know that why what are the advantages as well of electrical signals because inertia and friction effects are absent and amplification can be obtained with relative ease. Okay. That is why electrical signals are very convenient and recording or remotely monitoring is very, very conveniently done with electrical signals. So, every transducer which we have talked about needs to convert the quantity which is measured to an equivalent electrical quantity. Of course, we will discuss about errors in the subsequent classes and then how errors can be mitigated and then of course, we will see the effect of the frequency response and dynamic range on the entire measurement chain. These are some of the transducers which we will be using in CBM okay. and there are a few other sources uh, in my book. Thank you.